it's time to set up the rest of our routes for our contacts endpoint. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here. We're going to take the ping and contacts route and move it out of core and into its own file. And we'll just call it routes.clj. And specifically, we're going to take this part. So I'll just cut and paste in here. We'll format this a little bit, but we do need our namespace. The advantage of Ray is that all these are just data. So we can store this vector in its own def, and this is the ping routes. And we'll do the same for contacts. This way in core, we can just replace that by adding ping routes here and contact routes. Now, of course, we'll need this, so we'll import it. And I'm going to refer here so, so that we don't have to import the entire file. So we'll just grab specifically ping routes and contact routes. And that'll clean up our core file a little bit. Because for architecture, I kind of just want this to mainly be responsible for handling the ring server itself. And then I'm also going to make another file called contacts, which is might not be the best name, but that's fine. And this is going to hold all of our handlers. So we can grab this get handler and move it into our contacts handler file, which unfortunately is named contacts.contacts. And then we can also give it a name. And then this file is where we're going to import our database. Now this request parameter isn't being used, but we want to maintain the ARD, meaning that this is a function with exactly one argument. So we'll just change it to an underscore. We're going to also have to update our routes, which is going to import our handlers. And, and I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to refer to each handler that we want. And then we'll pass it into the get. Now before we move forward, we're going to have to add some more middleware to our already large app. First one we're going to want is parameters, and this will allow us to read the route parameter. So we'll add it to our middlewares. I don't think this actually matters where we order it in the list, so I'll add it to the top. And then the next set of middlewares that we want is going to be coercion, and we're going to grab all of them, so exceptions, requests, and response. And for the coercion middleware to work, we're going to also need rated coercion schema and schema.core. Now a quick explanation for coercion is that Everything sent through HTTP is a string, but sometimes we need that as a number. So data types do matter. And this is a way in Clojure for us to change a string to a number and so forth and so forth. Well, let's go ahead and add it to our data map. We need a property called coercion here. And inside of it, it will have the value of rated.coercion.schema slash coercion. And then inside of our middlewares, we're going to add all of those coercion middlewares that we imported earlier. I don't remember if the order matters for these, but from my notes, this is the order that I had it in. With that set, we can now move to routes and define all of our other routes. So I'm going to change this and have a nested structure. This way at slash, we'll have the get and post. And then we can also add a slash ID where we'll define our get, put, and delete. Now I want to fill out the contact routes before we define all of our handlers. So I'm going to copy this and just stub out a dummy handler and we'll name it dummy. So this is definitely going to be code that we'll remove later. But inside of these hash maps, we could actually expand the inner property. And what ring is going to be looking for is the property of handler. Right now it's going to be dummy. But this is important because we actually want to define the parameters of this route. And for the post route, we're going to grab everything from the body. And it's going to have the properties of first name, last name, and email. This is where the schema coercion comes in. So we're going to import schema core as s. But each of these properties are going to be strings. And we're going to clearly define that here. For the slash IDs, we're going to have an outer parameters where we can grab the path. And the path is going to be ID because it's going to match the name of the route path. This one, we want to treat it as an integer. For the get and delete, we can just pass in the handler because we don't need to define any other properties. But for put, we'll expand this because we, we're expecting an update with new information. So it's going to take in first name, last name, and email from the body. Now with that in place, we can go into contacts.contacts and define all the other handlers and eventually remove that dummy and then replace it with something that's smarter, I guess. So first, let's start with the create contact. And the request parameter, we're actually going to want to destructure the parameters property from the request. And then inside of this function, I'm going to add a let block so we can define values based on what is found inside of the parameters. I'm going to destructure body and then store it in a value called data. Then we're going to call db slash insert contact using that data. 
Now, if you remember what is being returned by our insert, we're returning the ID and nothing else. And that's why it's being stored in a created ID. Now, we'll use that because in our body response, we actually want to return the value that has been created in our database. So we'll send in created ID here. And why am I not connected to the REPL? All right, now that I'm connected to the REPL, I can show this. So if we evaluate this, we get a map where it already has the property of ID. And if you remember, that is what the second argument of get contacts by ID expects. It's going to be a map with the expected value. So this should work fine. Now we're going to work on the routes with a path parameter. So get contact by ID is going to destructure the ID from the path parameters in a let block. And we don't have to do anything fancy. So we can just take this and paste it here while replacing this part with an ID. This one is probably the most straightforward of all of them. All right, I'm going to save update for last because it's the most complicated, but we can start on delete contact. And we're going to follow pretty much the same pattern as create contact. We'll destructure the ID from the path parameters, but I do want the value of the contact before it's been deleted. So we're going to do a get by ID here. And with that, we could add the response. But before we respond, we really should do the delete. So I'm going to add it here as an intermediate step. And as expected, we'll send in the ID as well as the config. All right, now the hard part. Let's do update. So as always, we'll have a let block. But instead of doing the normal destruction, we're going to do a get in. And we're going to look inside of the parameters. And the way get in works is that you provide a hash map as the first argument and the second one is going to be a vector of the path to the value that you want. We want ID in this case. Now this allows us to get the raw ID instead of it being inside of the map and that will be important after we destructure the body from the parameters because we're going to construct a new value called data and using the associate function we're going to insert the ID property into body and like delete we're going to need to call the update function before the response and the response will do a get by ID again and that's gonna be all the handlers so in, back in our routes uh, this is a typo this has to be config we can go ahead and add all of the routes that we created so get by ID create update and delete contact and let's get rid of this dummy and scroll down so then we can replace each dummy with the correct handler so the post is gonna be create handler this put route is gonna be an update contact and finally delete contact all right, the very last thing that we need to do is actually test all these routes and make sure that they're working correctly. So back in core, we'll just load the file again and restart the server. So in Insomnia, we can do all of our requests. So first is contacts. And remember that we inserted a new contact in the REPL earlier. So we'll have John Smith here. And I'm not good with coming up with names, but we'll insert a Joe Blow. And it comes back as expected. Let's also use this ID of five. And we do a get now, and we should still get Joe Blow, which we do. We try something else. I believe two is me, which we get back, but sticking with Joe. Um, let's do an update. And let's say Joe Blow turned into Jon Snow. So we'll update this, and this is a, and we got the Pong, which is incorrect. So the update handler is not working. Let's check if delete works though. Also not working. So we need to go check on our code. Now everything looks right. I think I think we actually need to refresh the REPL so that core is getting the newly updated files for each thing. And then we can reevaluate, restart server. And that should do it. So let's try to do an update on contact number five. Internal server error, that's not good. What about a delete? Please tell me this works. All right, delete works. So the only thing that we need to update is put and all right what's wrong with updates param oh i misspelled parameters so this is parameters parameters there we go um i think i also want to add a little bit of safety here so i'm gonna take the update and put it inside the let block and what's being returned in the sql data is going to be the number of updated. This way we can add an if statement so that we return an OK response when an update takes place. Else we'll return a 404. So we'll have an error saying that we're unable to update the contact. And I kind of want to have the same response 
style as delete. So we'll have the status of whether or not it's updated and then the contact. And I also want to move this type of logic into delete. So this is gonna be a little bit of refactoring, I guess. But we'll move the delete up, store it in a delete account. And then we'll check the equality of delete account to make sure that it equals to one. Move this up. And we'll do the same thing, status of 404 and an error of unable to delete content. That way it'll be a little safer when we try to do illegal actions on our server. Now that everything should work because of a stupid typo, we'll load up core, once again, start the server, do a get on all of this, and let's, let's do an update on idea 4. So slash four and change this to put the updated is true, which is good. If we do a get, we should get just the contact, which we do. And then delete is also true. So everything is working perfectly. Even though I had to do a little bit of debugging, we finished. And that concludes the backend portion of this full stack project. Next, we're going to have to do a little bit of setup and then start doing the front end. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.